So this is video number two. And as we were just sharing with you, things went really well in year number one. We learned a lot, learned a lot about servicing the customer, but more so importantly, what we also took from year number one is that, hey, we had a foundation here that we can build on. So going into year two, there were some areas that we had taken a look at in year number one that we needed to focus on. Because when we looked at our customer base, it gave us some concerns because most of our money was being made with one customer. And anytime you got most of your eggs in one basket, there's always a reason for concern when that happens. So what we wanted to do was to go into year number two and start to spread out a bit more, but also to get more business from the customer that we started out with because we knew we were only getting a very small fraction of their freight. So we were trying to figure out now, how can we go and get a bigger piece of the pie? Because the whole idea is to make it so that we don't have to keep bidding every week for loads because that becomes tough if you have to bid every single week for the load. So if you already have loads that are already assigned to you, that's a whole lot better. So we got some contracts in place because we had moved loads in lanes for a period of time. Now I was comfortable with venturing out to saying, okay, let's go into contract on this lane. We can do this lane at set amount for the next 12 months. So then that gives us some consistent freight, what some people refer to as dedicated freight. And also we were looking into bringing on freight agents now because we had a system in place, we had processes and procedures in place, we knew what we were doing, and we, more importantly, the most important thing is we had built credit to this point. So now that you have good credit, an A rating, you can get your loads moved by anyone, small carriers or, or big, now it was time to bring in some different agents so that we can kind of teach them the business and they can produce money, make money for themselves and also make money for the business. So we got into that doing a lot of training. We realized that it took a lot of time, a whole lot of my time away from the things that I wanted to do. So what we noticed is that we had a big push up at the front part of our business. So we went from $59,000 in the first year to in the second year, we went to 137,000. Now, as we're starting to bring those agents on, that's more toward the latter part of the year. So I'll talk about in year three, how that really impacted the business. But undoubtedly, what increased revenue the most was the fact that we were able to go out and get a bigger piece of the existing customer's pie. You see, we were moving a very small percentage of that customer's loads, but when we start engaging with that customer more so in the second year and being very active and proactive in our approach, we started to get more loads from that customer and also got contracts from the customer, some consistent freight. So that is what helped to increase the revenue from $59,000 to $137,000 in that year span. So things were going really well in our business, over a $75,000 increase in total revenue from year one to year two. So we were ecstatic, very excited about what was happening in the business. But we also had some undercurrent that was happening. My partner, the person who I started this business with, who he and I set out together to say, hey, we were gonna go in and build a multi-million dollar business together. He had some issues that he ran into and he was no longer able to stay with me and work the business. He had to go overseas and take another job because of some things that happened that we didn't foresee happening with him. Um, so that was a big problem that we had to deal with, something that caused uh, a lot of problems within our business, but we were able to fix it. We were able to take a look at it and say, hey, this is what it is. And now I have to move on. I have to go ahead and take the business by the horns and keep moving it forward because although my partner is not here now, we set out to do this thing and we set some goals and the goals were bigger than he and I. So it wasn't about us necessarily. If one of us couldn't keep going, then the other had to keep moving forward to take our dream forward, to build what we had envisioned together. But the show goes on and what I figured I had to do was make sure that the business was as prepared as it possibly could be to go into year number three with a full head of steam. So what I started to look at toward the latter part of year number two was changing TMS systems. 
to change to a TMS that would offer me a technology that I could offer a better service to my customer, to be able to offer a LTL service, truly discounted rates, truly LTL rates. I knew that would be a game changer for my business. So I started to put that into play at the end of the second year. So going into year number three, we were going to be prepared and ready to be able to move LTL loads. And we were under the impression, under the thinking that that would help to increase revenue because it would put us in a whole different category of freight, that LTL category where we'll be moving larger volumes. And the thought was would also be making more money. And we also still had the freight agent piece that I had to manage that piece as well to make sure that we had trained agents that can do the job because these guys are operating under my MC number. So I got to make sure that they're squared away. So there are a lot of things to make sure that we get under control and ready going into year number three so that we can have the most success for that year because year two has ended. That 137,000 is great, but that's over now. Now we have to start building for year number three. So this will conclude video number two. Tomorrow I will post three new videos. And in these videos, it's going to break down the income for year number three, four and five and show you what we were doing during those times. And also be aware that revenue does not always increase. We could have took some losses somewhere in there. So we'll discuss all of that starting in video number three tomorrow four and five. So until the next time, I wish you the very best in your life and business. If you want to learn more about the freight broker business, you know, I'll leave a free link in the description. It's my five video series titled how the load movement process works. It will give you a look into the freight broker business, let you see how it works before you come into it. So don't forget to check for those videos tomorrow. See you at the top because the bottom is much too crowded.